Hi, I'm Damien from Codefights. Today we'll discuss hash tables. Hash tables are another data structure that help us store collections of data, where we place a piece of information, called the key, to look up the value we are interested in instead of using an index. To give a concrete example, let's say we wanted to store information on Codefights users. This card shows the information we want to store. Here we have the username, and maybe we include some other information, such as the user's real name and the date she joined Codefights. When a user comes to our website, they're going to log in using their username, in this case, Squash Bugs. We want to use the username to quickly find the other information about this user. If we limit usernames to 20 characters and only allow lowercase letters and underscores, there are 27 to the 20, or about 10 to the 28, possible usernames. This set of possible usernames is referred to as the universe of usernames and is generally much bigger than the actual number of users we have. A really bad way of storing our users for quick lookup is to make an array of length 10 to the 28. Given a username, like squash bugs, we could figure out the corresponding index in the array and access the information that way. The Codefights user base has some number n of users, and this can be pretty large. 10 million entries isn't unreasonable for a database. However, this is tiny compared to the universe size of 10 to the 28 possible usernames. We have to allocate space for all of our users. There's no way around that. But there's no way we're going to be able to allocate an array with 10 to the 28 entries. Let's compare the linked list and array solutions. If we have 10 million users and 10 to the 28 possible usernames, using the array method, lookup is incredibly fast, order 1. But the space needed is of the order of the size of our universe, 10 to the 28. Using a linked list, the space we have is the best possible, one node per user. But unfortunately, when looking for a user, we may have to traverse the entire list. For a hash table, the lookup is order 1, matching the lookup of the array. And the space requirement is also optimal at order n. The hash table has combined the best aspects of the array and linked list. Let's see how that works. Let's look at a Codefights database that contains six users. Underlying our hash table is an array with size 7. Our hash table is going to use the key, that is, the username squash bugs, to locate where in the array we can find this user. Some disadvantages of the hash table is the keys have to be unique for every single element. And once you put an element in, you can't change the key. If this user wanted to change her username, we would have to create a new entry with the new username and copy all the information into that new value. We'll see why that happens in just a second. The hash table works by taking a function, called the hash, which takes in a key and returns an index. Some references will talk about a hash code function and then a compression function separately. But ultimately, we need a function that takes a key and gives us the location in the array. So we feed our hash function the key squash bugs and get the number 3. That tells us when squash bugs gets added to the array, it gets added at index 3. Let's add some other users. The hash function applied to analytical engineer returns 4. So this user would be placed at index 4. Resistance is futile gets placed in index 1. Aniac Maniac gets placed in index 2. Dr. Math gets placed in index 0. Notice I haven't told you what the hash function is. There are many different hash functions to choose from, and if you choose a different hash function, you'll get a different assignment. When choosing a hash function, we want the function to return the same value whenever it sees the same key. So if we're looking for Dr. Math, the hash function has to return 0 every time. If Dr. Math wanted to change her username, say to DocMath, this would be a problem because the hash of Dr. Math isn't necessarily the same as the hash of docmath. The best we could do is create a new user, docmath, and copy all the information over. We can't change the keys because it's an integral part of how the hash table looks up the user. There is one possibility we haven't considered yet, that two keys get hashed to the same array index. This is called a collision, and in some sense, it's inevitable. We have 10 to the 28 possible usernames, and only 7 indices. So on average, 10 to the 27 usernames are assigned to the same index. We might be very lucky and have all six of our users just happen to be assigned to different indices, but we can't count on this. There are a couple of different ways of resolving this. The first method is called chaining. We have a new user, does compute, and the hash for this user is 1. This gives us a problem because resistance is futile is already at index 1. We don't want to delete a user, so we're left with the question of what to do. Instead of storing elements directly in the array, we could instead store the beginnings of linked lists. When we have a collision, we simply add to the linked list at that index. You can already see if we're really unlucky, a lot of elements could get assigned to the same index. We have to search through a lot of elements. If we have an array that's big enough, and we're not really unlucky, then the values will spread themselves out more or less evenly across the array, keeping lookup times short. When that happens, 
we call the hash function a good hash. It's always possible that you're the unluckiest person using the hash table, and that every single element you add gets assigned to the same index. In that case, your hash table has become a linked list. The good news is if you find yourself in that situation, you can always go ahead and change the hash function to one that does a better job spreading out the data you're encountering. A different way of dealing with collisions without using a linked list is called linear probing. The way it works is we start by trying to put information into index 1 and notice it's already being used. Then we try the next index, index 2, and then go on and we keep trying new indices until we find one that isn't being used. In this case, index 5. How would we find does compute? First, our code computes the hash of does compute and gets the index 1, not 5. Our code would start by looking at position 1 and see does compute isn't stored there. So it would look at the next element and it keeps checking until it reaches position 5 and finds does compute. What would happen if we looked for a username Apollo who isn't in our database? The hash of Apollo is 2, so the code would start looking at index 2. Not finding Apollo, it would move to index 3, 4, and then 5. Once it reaches index 6 and finds an empty slot, it can return and tell us the Apollo isn't in our hash table because it would have been placed in the first empty spot, in this case index 6. So we have two methods, linear probing and chaining, to resolve collisions. Which one's best? The answer is, it depends. Linear probing is a little more complicated, especially when users are deleted. For example, if Ada Lovelace decided to leave, we have to remember when using linear probing that there was a user here and there are methods for dealing with that. Chaining is conceptually simpler, but you have to store extra information, although not very much, to support the linked list structure. If you're doing a lot of deletions, chaining is probably better. If space is at a premium, consider using linear probing instead. But the real answer for mission-critical code is to try both and compare. The good news is how collisions are dealt with is only important when trying to implement a hash table. If you're just trying to use a hash table, all these details are taken care of for you. Be sure to check out CodeFight's interview practice for more information about hash tables and practice solving real interview questions about them.